See if you're paying attention now. Yeah, Hallelujah. I've told Martha for years, eyeballs right here. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be over there, eyeballs right here. Yeah. Come Amen. On God, I gotta, when I need more monitor, I need more monitor. Don't make me come over there. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, if I come over there, I bring, I bring more than the obituaries. I'm running. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. We've already been having fun since 10 o'clock this morning. Amen. Amen. And it's just now beginning. We're going to be having a special Holy Communion service here in just a few moments. Uh, but before we do that, we want Latasha to come and sing and bless us uh, this morning. And uh, so we want you to worship with her on today as she comes to sing. Amen. You know which one are you doing? Okay, all right. All right. Everybody say praise the Lord for Latasha. She comes. Today I was asked to sing this song again. I keep praying by Sister Eve. I want you to pray for her husband. He's not doing very well. She needs your uplifting. It's very hard. And the kids need your help because when they're when your father's sick, it ain't nothing like it. Because I get concerned when he gets sick because I'm a daddy's girl. So I understand their position. Everybody pray for them and sing this song today from your heart. Oh, you bet.
five. Y'all keep the praise. Brother Troy, we're going to let you come today and bless us this song. Everybody give the Lord a praise for Brother Troy as he comes. And I, I, hold on, I'm, I'm going to brag on Brother Troy a little bit yesterday morning in the morning session. Uh, I'm going to brag on him just a little bit more today uh, because the scripture says give honor where honor is due. And uh, Brother Troy has, uh, for the last few years, been an invaluable asset uh, uh, to the work here, and especially during these conferences, during the camp meeting, he has uh, he's been busy. Uh, and he was a little shocked this morning when we got here, and uh, uh, he was maybe just running a little. He wasn't late. He wasn't late, but he was later than his normal uh, routine. And uh, they, had, they had already got the ice out, which he normally does. They had already uh, done a few other things. And they had coffee made. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I just wanted to let everybody know, those of you that uh, don't realize, Brooke Troy does a lot around here. We appreciate his efforts and his time, and he's so talented. Everybody that comes up in here talks about how how very talented uh, Brother Troy is, uh, blessing us with music and song. And so today, I would like for us just to honor Brother Troy. For Jim. We've honored a lot of folks, but I'd like for us to honor him, because behind the scenes, uh, he's working, keeping everything running and rolling and going. Amen. We appreciate it. Oh, and it's a mighty honor. As I walk to the door, I heard those prayers in the morning.
check their blood pressure. Brother Powers is laying up in the hospital this morning 
heart failure after just having open heart surgery with heart failure, kidney failure, pneumonia, multiple complications. But his wife and children decided I'm going to go where I can get some help. And right here this morning, they're in this place. Eva, darling, come on down here. We're going to pray for you and your family before we go any further in this service today. I want some of the church mothers to come help us pray. Some folks that have of God for this situation. You may not realize this, but God looks upon your sacrifice today and sees. He sees the the press that you've made it through. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She tried everything else. Tried medical science. She apparently had been a wealthy woman. You remember what the scripture says? How long had she had that issue of blood? How many, who knows? Twelve years. That's exactly right. She had that issue of blood 12 years and the scripture said she had spent all that she had. But one day Jesus passed by. And the word tells us that woman made her way through the press. We most of the time preach it that she pressed through the crowd. That's not what the scripture said. The scripture said that she made her way through the press. In other words, what that means is when everything around her was pressing her and pressuring her and telling her that she couldn't make it and it wasn't going to get any better, this woman made her way, whoop, my God, made her way to Jesus and simply touched the hem of his garment. When she did, the scripture said that Jesus perceived that virtue had left from him. He turned and saw this woman and he said, Your faith uh, hath made you whole. And she went from that day ever went whole. And I've come to declare to you today, we're going to pray. I want these women to passionately and compassionately pray for you, your family, your husband, for everything you're going through, for your finance. Passionately pray, ladies. Passionately pray. Because you've made your way through the press. You've made your way through the press and God has looked upon you and seen your sacrifice. And for that, He is responding today. Hallelujah. And a turnaround is now at hand. Everything's going to be all right. There's a divine destiny. There's a divine appointment. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on, Brother Troy. Sing it one more time. Oh, I love Jesus. Hallelujah.
On time. On time. Yeah. Every time. Amen. Come on. But you need him. He's never late. You know, I found out years ago about Jesus. He's the slowest man I know to always be right on time. Yeah. He ain't never late. You know, somebody jumped up in church a while back and uh, said that uh, they was glad that there wasn't anything that God could not do. Amen. And I said, yeah, there actually is some things that God cannot do. God, not, God cannot lie. Amen. And God cannot fail. Come on, amen. Amen. Other than that, there ain't nothing he can't do. But he can't lie and he can't fail. He's in time, on time, every time. That you need him. Y'all okay today? Let me share a verse with you very quickly before we go any further in this service. We have experienced. We have experienced in this place uh, over the last few days and nights the presence, the power, the glory of God Himself. We have been drawn together, fitly joined in a building of, for whom Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to leave this conference we're going to leave this convention. You're going to go back to Kentucky. You're going to go back to Missouri. Some will go back to Illinois. We're going to go back to our respective place of abode. And we are going to forever be changed by what has happened and occurred in this place over these last four days. The divine has met with us. Come on, come on up here. Come on, come on up here. Come up here. Talk to us. Talk to us. Talk to us. Come on, Elder. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before I got my truck serviced and fixed, there was a, a, a older man that worked on my my truck. His name is Cliff Pig. And his wife is Charlotte Pig. And she had a bone marrow cancer. And she beat it. Amen. Come but on. But it come back. And it come back to her brain in the form of a tumor. Well, kids can drive and die. The devil's a liar. Amen. And he's the father of a lie. Amen. And I told them that we would all stand in prayer for them. Yes. And that we would take their needs to the Lord. Come on. And I, I didn't forget it. I was just waiting for the right timing. And I believe that. Throughout the whole service, it could have happened. But I think this morning is the hour of deliverance. As we go into uh, whatever Bishop's got planned this morning, remember that in prayer, and every time you think of the word or the, the word cancer or the word tumor, curse that thing at the root out of her Amen. body. In Jesus' Turn name, we curse through. you at the root right now, and yes. we command you to leave. Come on. Now, that's right. Amen. You got no right in that woman. That's right. And the man is in his seventies, and I don't know how old she is, but he is so in love with this woman that this me sharing the confidence with him and just sharing that we would be in prayer with him. Just, just in prayer for her, knowing that he had someone there that he was working on their vehicle. Knowing that he was fixing that vehicle to come to a conference, knowing that we were all going to stand in agreement in the gap between life and death, belief and disbelief, healed and not healed. He broke down in tears and started flowing out of his body. He couldn't keep from it. The man is truly in love with his wife, and he needs a miracle. So remember him in your prayers. What, well, tell us his name again. His name is Cliff Pig. Her name is Charlotte Pig. P-I-G? P-I-G-G. P-I-G-G. Just like your son coin. Pig. Her name's Charlotte. And his name's Cliff. Yes. Take somebody by the hand next to you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know today that you are the cancer killer. 
Lord, earlier this year, when I had a bad report that cancer was in my body, Lord, you gave me a miracle. And you're no respecter of persons. That that you've done for one, you will do for all if we will trust and believe. Now, Lord, by faith, right here in this little gathering of the elect here over the last few days, we've put our faith, we've affected our faith, Lord, toward you. And we ask you, oh God, that you would reach out of the portals of heaven with a healing touch for Cliff and Charlotte. Charlotte today, Lord, needs a miracle. Lord, she needs that cancer to be driven from her. And Lord, we are convinced and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt today, hallelujah, that you are the sea walker, that you're the blind eye opener, that you're the deaf ear unstopper, that you're the dead man raiser, and at the same time, you're the cancer killer. And so in Jesus' name today, we decree and declare that her body be healed totally from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Lord, affect her blood flow today. Lord, drive out every cancer cell and we ask in Jesus name that the blood of Jesus that washes away every sin, every iniquity every transgression every physical sickness we ask it today that it would be applied to her body in Jesus name amen and we call it done, come on somebody agree with us, amen hallelujah oh thank you Jesus God is good. God is good. God is good. Yeah, Amen. I'm going to show you a, a, a word here very quickly before we partake of communion. Very quickly. I'm not going to keep you long today. They cooked. We've got plenty of good food upstairs, but we want to partake of the Lord's table for just a second. Thank you. The third chapter of the book of Ephesians. third chapter of the book of Ephesians verse 16 oh hallelujah I feel something it's, it's a very intimate anointing here this morning right now verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, and I don't even talk about that today, but the scripture said in the last day that there would be many whose love would wax cold. And I look around at the church world as a whole and their love has waxed cold. They have no feeling for one another. Churches, these groups, these... Uh, yes, dear, you can be seated. Uh, because you know I may ramble on for a second. The, these uh, me metropolitan uh, epicenters, I call them, these theatrical entertainment venues that we call churches. Oh.